I've been asked to comment on what's going on in the world. There's a war in Ukraine, there's a war in Gaza. There are horrible things happening. So, I don't think we're given to to know really what's going on at any point in time, partly because there's so many complex issues pushing and pulling that no one really knows which of them is gaining strength uh, enough to hold sway. So of all the many, many things that are going on, um, certain countries are rising, certain ones are falling, oil is becoming more or less available in different places, so is food. There's all sorts of pullings and pushings going on, some of which are just not knowable. The complexity of it all together is not knowable, it's just too much. However, an astrologer can see underlying trends that are not looked for by other commentators. And what we see when we look at the world's significant horoscopes and so on, the, the main thing to say is that America, the world's greatest power, is going through a Pluto return. Now, it's gone effectively, it won't be exact anymore, but we're starting to see the implications of the Pluto return over the horoscope of America going back to the time of the independence. Remembering at all times that America is a cancer state, therefore its family values are strong and it thinks of itself as a unit and there's rivalry within the various factions of America, but Americans tend to feel really very pleased to be American and, and rather forgiving in their self-analysis because of this. Anyway, those two things in hand then, the Pluto return of a nation-state, um, we don't know about this because it's not really happened to anybody important and there could be no one more important than America. And because America is going through its Pluto return, there's a sense of um, existential risk. Now this word existential wasn't very often used when I was young. It's being used repeatedly nowadays in a very over-the-top kind of way by people that don't really seem to understand fully what it means. I think what it means is that this needs to be sorted or we die. So Pluto brings that kind of existential threat to inauthentic things. Now, America has been extraordinarily inauthentic in modern times. It has this American dream, which has become everyone's nightmare. It's to do with the education system and the healing system, the, the healthcare system, and um, all the way they're, they're, they're managing the, the balance between the rich and the poor, the haves and the have-nots. It's been really badly managed. And so there's a lot of tension within the country. And these two things are connected. America's outreach into the world has been extraordinarily profound for most of this last century, because it was the winner of the Second World War, actually the only winner, and it had the strongest navy afterwards, so it set the terms of the peace. And there was a great deal of wisdom brought to that at that time, and America basically um, guaranteed the security of the high seas, whereas no one else had a navy to guarantee their merchant vessels, so they would be pirated, until America said, no, the seas are safe. And what that actually did was made every player in the world able to access the big game of trade. So everybody did what they could do best. This is the essence of capitalism. Adam Smith, if you ever bother to read that book, uh, Wealth of Nations, says nothing more than it's really, really, really efficient if everybody does what they're good at, basically. And that happened on a worldly scale like never before. 
piracy was the world's trading danger until America governed the high seas. And they did that not through any sense of altruism, but because they needed peace in the very conflicted Middle Eastern region where they got their oil to support their burgeoning industrial um, technology and, and cars and so on there. The whole industrial world was in need of oil. So they needed to keep the peaceful oceans. However, they don't need that anymore because very recently indeed, shale has been discovered in America to mean that America doesn't have to rely upon sources of oil from countries in the distance. They can make their own locally, which makes them very much more secure and much, much richer as well. So the Middle East is no longer their concern to keep it safe. And we're already seeing the evidence of that, where uh, Houthis even are, are bombing, you know, sending missiles to bomb merchant trade. And the Iranians are said to have done that as well. So it's already started. Now back to Pluto, going through, or America going through its Pluto return, it had to decide what was necessary for it to continue to exist. Pluto Transit's existential threat. America's very existence was perceived to be under threat. Whether it was or not is not the point, because cancers don't care about logic, they care about how it feels. And America has actually felt under threat because they couldn't guarantee their oil supplies until now, where they can. And so a very belligerent leader came forward and Trump said to China, you got to pay more and, and so on and so forth. And China was becoming a threat economically to America. America won't have that. So what America has just done by withdrawing its policing of the world's oceans is make itself more secure in its cancerian way by making it very difficult indeed for anyone else to afford a military strong enough to take them on. That's actually the convoluted logic of, of why there is um, the background shift occurring. And Russia is also experiencing the same sense of existential threat. When it was the Soviet Union or surrounded by the other countries in the Soviet Union, it was very safe from the kind of attacks that both Napoleon and Hitler did over the North European plain. Vulnerable indeed. Russia always wants buffer states, and if Ukraine was lost to NATO, it would be very naked and frightened, and um, that would result in a world war. So, Russia and Ukraine being at war is in a very bizarre way. That which is at the moment anyway, keeping us from this period of fiery anger that's going on in, in the world ever generally, um, from exploding into a third world war. So despite the torturous conditions for the poor prota protagonists in, in, in the war, nobody wants it to end because it's dangerous when it ends, either way, whichever the result. There's wars going on in Africa for the same kind of reason. Uh, Ethiopia can't reach the, um, the water, the, the, uh, the blue waters, because Eritrea's in the way, and so Ethiopia's in danger of its own economic collapse, um, and so on. There's big shifts taking place. And America is actually feeling insecure. And so it's racing home and battening down the hatches, doing uh, amazing trade deals with both Canada and Mexico. So the whole of that North American continent is going to be very less interested in Europe in future. So all the fiery upsets in Europe are, are no longer contained. It happened before when Yugoslavia split up and became many states because it was no longer ruled by the iron hand of Tito who had just died. And in some cases, a really big dictatorial force is stopping the kind of natural enmity between 
neighboring countries, which is seen all over the world. And the forces of peace are, are not only democracy, sometimes they're dictatorships. If the dictators that nowadays run the world lose their grip, what does happen, what has happened and is happening in this day, is that gang war uh, takes place. When a, a, a nation state fails, then it's taken over by gangs, which happened in Russia through the 90s. It's happening all the time, all over the world. And then the, the winner of the gang war it takes over and then becomes the, the dictator of the country. And it takes a very mature country indeed to move eventually to a sustainable and real democracy. And that's not happened. Kind of happened in America on the face of it, but Behind the scenes, there are other forces. When it comes to the other conflicts around the world, and, and um, that could, could easily include COVID, for all we know, that might have been biological warfare. Uh, it, it, it will include lots of things that we really don't understand about trade, uh, interference in trade, like the undersea pipeline and, and, and so on. Lots of secrets, lots of sinister things going on. Now, all of this can actually be partially attributed to America's backing away from its taking this world role as a, as a policeman, as it were. And certain other countries, like Turkey is an example, very proud Ottoman Empire, is, is, is not yet died in their minds. Um, Israel, uh, once again, that goes back thousands of years where they'll identify themselves as having nation statehood a long, long, long time ago. And other people today saying that doesn't count. And, and so there's this uh, threat to Israel's existence as well. And that was uh, brought to a hot point when the Muslim states started to talk doing uh, better trade deals with Israel than with the Palestines, Palestinians. Palestine's so poor. They need money and, and the, the local countries are becoming less interested in the religious principle involved uh, than they are with money. So Israel wanted to crush um, Hamas because its own identity as a country is under threat. However, Hamas was feeling... Um, that nobody was looking at their their own level of po poverty in the Palestine kind of situation. So both countries have, have got an understandable reason for for going for, for it. And in the past, um, until very recently, America was really, really, really on Israel's side about everything. And, and there's no real imperative if the Middle East is no longer very important to America, linked to the shale. So it all ties up together in ways that it can't easily be seen unless you're really looking deeply. And the thing is that when any force like a Pluto return to the world's power possessor is unleashed, nobody knows. God only knows. It's not even true. Nobody knows what, what's happening next. This is a period of um, huge consequence. I mean, this kind of thing is what triggers the eventual upsets of Armageddon. So you could see it as the first battle of Armageddon has begun, if, if, if you want to see it in those dramatic terms. And I, I don't think you'd be wrong to see it that, that way. Anyway, I think it's going to get a lot more fiery before it calms down. And I don't think that we need to postpone any longer whatever it is we're going to do to, to become spiritually strong and, and, and capable of dealing with the world. Now's the time.